Happy Monday everyone, and welcome to my newest art video series titled Studio Sessions, and today is going to be episode 1. Real quick before I begin, if you would like to see a slowed down version of this video that contains voiceover and other fun daily rewards, tutorials, free prints, etc., check out patreon.com slash happydartist. So first and foremost, I just wanted to say a quick sorry that I've been a little absent from YouTube. Um, I know it's been about a week since I posted a video, and although I think posting one video a week is actually quite a good posting schedule, like I think it, it requires a lot of time and work to be able to produce a weekly video. I know, I, I know at the end of the day, a lot of you guys are just used to me posting two or three times a week, and I have been out of town. I was recently at a friend's wedding, and before and after the wedding, I was super busy preparing paintings for um, a few solo shows that I have in the spring, along with some group shows as well. So I've just been in a painting frenzy. And this piece that you're watching now is one of the pieces that I recently finished. Um, this piece is eight by 10 inches, and it's probably the longest time I've ever spent on an eight by 10, I think. I spent probably twice or three times um, as long on this piece, and you'll see why in a few. I simply just lost myself rendering all the little details. It was so much fun. It was very cathartic and relaxing um, to just kind of focus all my attention, painting all day and not worrying about anything else. But I really did miss YouTube, so I'm glad to be back and I cannot wait to share this new video series with you guys. Um, a lot of you guys have been following me for a while or discovered my channel through my 30 Days of Art video series. And honestly, when I began that video series, I wasn't sure where it would lead me or if I would enjoy it or what it would do for my channel. But after the 30 videos I made, I just simply fell in love with YouTube, with you guys, and also fell in love with that type of video format where you have a time lapse of a piece of art you're working on and also a helpful voiceover commentary about an art related topic. And yeah, I have been looking for a replacement or I guess a new upgraded version of 30 Days of Art so that I can continue making videos in this format. And I'm really glad that my boyfriend was able to help me come up with this new terminology, I guess, or this new title for um, the series, which will be Studio Sessions. So without further ado, let me jump right into today's topic of discussion. And that is how to have a good work ethic and how to fight procrastination. Um, so many of you have requested this. And although I don't think I'm like the most qualified life coach or time management uh, guru, um, recently I have had to practice really good time management and really up my work ethic and also resist the temptation to procrastinate. Um, I've said yes to many projects, all of which I'm very grateful and excited about. So um, yeah, I simply had to kind of really train myself to not procrastinate and make the best use of my time and learn how to have the best work ethic I've ever had in my life, I think. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. My first and favorite tip is to write out a to-do list. And I'm going to elaborate on what I mean because I know writing out a to-do list is a very common and almost generic tip that people have for training yourself to have good time management or good work ethic. But what I mean specifically by my style of writing out to-do list is first and foremost, do not put so much pressure on yourself to finish everything on your to-do list in one day. For me, my to-do list is more of a reminder of all the little deadlines and things that I have to accomplish. And it's almost there so that I don't forget what I need to do. It's almost like a to-do list slash calendar slash planner. Um, but yeah, when I write out to-do list for the day, I do not expect myself to finish everything that day and I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't finish everything in one day. However, I do try to switch up the types of tasks to include in my to-do list. Um, before, I would only include major important tasks. Um, for example, when I was in school, um, things like 
write your write and finish your history paper or um, study for your math exam like those really big <laughs> daunting tasks and I would never include the smaller things like make your bed or do your laundry or I don't know go to the gym for 20 minutes something small and simple um, and I found that it was really discouraging because if all I had to do were those big daunting tasks that took several hours I could go the entire day working my butt off and not being able to cross anything off that list and just feeling super defeated. So I really encourage you to incorporate a few easy and fun tasks. Um, some of my favorite go-tos during the, um, my current, I guess my current schedule is wake up by a certain time. If I'm able to wake up early by a certain time, I reward myself by checking that off my to-do list or make the bed or do Pilates for 30 minutes. So these really fast and easy things um, if I'm able to start off my day by feeling a sense of accomplishment or as I go about my day um, tackling big and small tasks, um, I, I can just give myself so much more positive reinforcement and encouragement to continue on with my to-do list. Um, so yeah, my second tip is very similar to the first one. It kind of... Um, bounces off the first tip and that is to do the few quick and easy tasks first before you begin your huge daunting tasks. So if you have something that you know will only take a few minutes, go ahead and get that out of the way. Not only does it give you that rewarding, satisfying feeling of crossing that item off your to-do list, but also it kind of warms up your brain, warms up your energy levels to give you confidence to tackle the bigger items. And my third tip is to, at the end of each day, um, aside from your actual to-do list, is to just write down a quick blurb, maybe write down another list of everything you've done that day. For me, it's just a way for me to kind of recap and also to give myself the reassurance that my day wasn't wasted. I think a lot of times for those of us who get really busy, whether you're working or you're a student, um, if you get super busy and you spend all day running around trying to finish this and that, you forget that you've actually accomplished a lot because if you go to sleep and you feel like you haven't completed something but you've spent several hours on the project, um, you almost forget that like yes even though you didn't finish the thing you wanted to do you still invested time into it and you still should be proud of yourself and reward yourself for um, taking the steps closer to being finished so that's why at the end of each day I always write down what I did if I didn't finish a project I'll at least talk about how many hours I spent on it and the progress I made on it and um, my fourth tip is to try to fit in all of your fun activities, your relaxation, entertaining activities for later in the day and um, do all of your actual tasks towards the beginning of the day in the morning. And my, I mean, obviously everyone's patterns are different, but for me personally, the reason why I choose to do this is because regardless if I spent the whole day working hard or if I spent the whole day having fun or spent the whole day you know procrastinating on the computer um, regardless of what I do at the end of each day I always feel a lot more tired than in the morning in the morning if I've gotten up and gotten a good night's sleep and had my coffee I am so energetic and pumped and ready to tackle whatever you know uh, obstacle or goal that comes my way but at the evening all I want to do is relax so my recommendation is to just get your boring or energy consuming tasks out of the way in the morning. And my fifth and final tip is something that my boyfriend gave me and I love this tip and that is to physically and literally remove all of your distractions. So if you like to play on your phone a lot or you like to spend a lot of time chatting with your friends, um, just physically put your phone in another room, lock your phone up or tell, I don't know, give your phone to your mom, tell her to hide it until a certain time. And then that way it really forces you to concentrate on whatever project you're working on. And yeah, especially if it's a huge hassle to try to find your phone or try to find whatever distracting thing that you were hiding. If it's a huge hassle to do that, you will be way less encouraged to um, fall back into the trap of always feeling distracted. So yeah. 
I hope you guys found this list useful. Um, feel free to write down in the comments below any tips that you have for combating procrastination. I'd love to hear it. And lastly, if you would like prints of this piece, I have them available at happyd-artist.com. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!